I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday. If you missed last week's video, I asked you to solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it on your own. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's episode of Mechanism Monday. In this chemical transformation, we're using lithium aluminum hydride to overall break up this cyclic compound and leave us behind with also an alkyne. And this initially may seem counterintuitive because lithium aluminum hydride is often known as a reducing agent for things like carbonyl compounds. And in fact, that's exactly how this mechanism begins. So remember that lithium aluminum hydride can also be drawn out as aluminum with four aluminum to hydrogen bonds, which is going to overall be negatively charged. And the lithium component is just the counter ion for this hydride donating species. And as you might have predicted from organic chemistry, the first step is actually going to be attack from this hydride to this carbonyl carbon position, which is going to kick up these pi electrons to being located on oxygen. And now that we've created that new bond between the hydrogen and carbon, and now our oxygen is negatively charged, what we're left with is a species which contains a negatively charged oxygen as well as that new carbon hydrogen bond and everything else still remains the same. Now importantly what you should know is that this OTF stands for what's called a triflate. A triflate is an organosulfonate which has a CF3 on it, two sulfur to oxygen double bonds, and the other side is going to be that oxygen. In this case, it's going to the R group, which would be located at this position. Again, this is called a triflate, and it is a pseudohalide. We call it a pseudohalide because it acts similar to how halides behave, specifically in being very good leaving groups. In fact, what's going to happen here is these electrons located at the oxygen are going to come back down and what that's going to do is actually cause this carbon to carbon bond to break. And in doing so, the electrons are going to flow to this position where this other pi bond was. And that is therefore in turn going to cause a cascade effect, which kicks off the triflate ion, which remember we said is a good leaving group. And in this step, not only have we broken this bond to open the ring, but we've also placed another set of electrons between these two carbon atoms, giving us our alkyne, or our carbon to carbon triple bond. And at this position, what you're left with is actually an aldehyde. So remember now that we've broken this carbon carbon bond, what we have left is an aldehyde. And we also have formed our new alkyne. From here, what will happen is another one of those aluminum hydride species can come in and reduce our aldehyde. So these electrons will traverse over to this electrophilic carbon position kicking up these electrons, and that is going to reproduce another negatively charged oxygen atom. Specifically, now, we have generated a position where there are now two carbon to hydrogen bonds located at this carbon. And the rest of the molecule remains intact with our two methyl groups, and also we still are left with our alkyne. Now remember, in addition to this, in our second step of our mechanism, we had acid, or H3O+. And that H3O+, remember, looks like this where now we have a positively charged oxygen species and a proton transfer can occur between the electrons on this newly negatively charged oxygen atom to deprotonate the acid, leaving behind water and also producing our final product. Now importantly, even though initially this mechanism may have looked challenging, all of these steps and all of these reaction mechanisms were introduced in organic chemistry. We have reduction of a carbonyl compound existing twice, so at this position was a ketone and at this position was an aldehyde, both of which we learned in organic chemistry too can be reduced by lithium aluminum hydride. We also talked about elimination mechanisms for acyl substitutions and that is going to break this carbon to carbon bond generating our alkyne. And then also we've learned about proton transfers, which are a very common mechanism for organic chemistry. Each of these, taken step by step, give us our overall transformation. For next week's video, I'm going to ask you to solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on the solution for this mechanism. I'll see you in the next video.